Hey everyone, Pastor Seth here! Sebastian here! This is Sam. Hey, so glad that you guys are with us today. We got our special co-host here, Sebas. And we hope you had the guys had a great Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Yes, and we I did. And yeah. uh, we're still celebrating Thanksgiving, actually, because today we're not talking about just Thanksgiving. We're talking about thanks living every oh, single like day, that. being thankful. And so um, our message today is all about hashtag be thankful. And by the way, if you're watching this at 9 a.m. online with us, we're glad that you're here. And following our service at uh, 9 a.m. at 10 a.m., we're in person at Thompson Town Park, 181 Town Park Road. And uh, we can check out this message in person, followed by a time of fellowship today, a time of gratitude, awesome. hanging out with each other, eating some food, and playing some games. So love to oh, see fun. you there. You got an opportunity to do so real fast. If you're watching this later in the week, well... Hashtag too late. Sorry about it. But there's always next time. Every Sunday we're meeting at 181 Town Park Road. We'd love to see you in person. Cool. 10 a.m. Be there. All right. Or be square. I was okay. trying to make a square. Be but... square. Okay. Hey. So on the spirit of Thanksgiving, things like that. I know we just celebrated. We just ate. We had family. Whatever. Maybe you worked. Sorry. But we'd love you to drop in the comments right now. Uh, we've talked about this before. But first thing we want to know. We have a couple things about Thanksgiving. Are you hashtag team turkey or ham or hashtag team side dishes? I want to hear from you guys right now. All right, team turkey, team main, that's I guess considered the main the dish. The main dish, yep. Or team side, side dish. dish. So hashtag team main dish or team side dish. Mm. Want to know right now, not side chick, all right, side dish. That's a whole other story. That's a message, all right. In and its own. Yeah, of its own. But well, wait, what about... Desserts. Okay, there's a whole nother okay, question. We're not getting there yet. Right now, it's hashtag team. Okay. <laughs> Main dish or side dish? Side okay, dish. Cool. Desserts is I, its I'm own gonna category. Say, I'm going to say side dish for me. Sorry. Yeah, I Don't be sorry because I'm actually, I'm not going to fight you on this one. I'm team side dish as well. Yeah. You know, I, honestly, when it comes, I like turkey. I like ham. I like them both. I'll have them both on my plate. But what I'm saving room for is the side dishes. Yeah, side dish. All right. <laughs> so making side dishes. So, hey. So, uh, what is your favorite side dish? Mine is uh, cornbread stuffing. I got to say, okay. yep. Okay. What, what you got there, fam? What's going uh, on? I like mashed potatoes. I like the vegetables. Oh, I thought um, like broccoli casserole. Broccoli casserole. Like I like well, mac the, and cheese. Broccoli. Oh, you like the mac? Oh, macaroni mac and cheese. cheese. Okay. Yes, that's okay. a good and side. Pizza. Oh, pizza. Oh, pizza's a side dish at Thanksgiving. I guess I it is the best. It might as well be, right? That's a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thankful yeah, for pizza. Yeah. So, um, if you like your side dishes, drop it in. If Does you're like, have some different side dishes in the traditional no. Or you have team main dish. You're like, I don't do turkey or ham. We do. We have a friend who does lasagna. That's no. the team main yeah. dish. They actually don't cook at all and they order Italian. They, they order it out. Yeah, yeah, if that's you, cool. Yes. Love to hear from you. Uh, <laughs> and so now we're into the dessert question, okay? So hashtag team desserts, it's its own thing. What is like the first dessert going on your plates? Pecan pie right here. <laughs> yeah, that's on my plate. Well, see, in our family, we make chocolate pies, so that's that's my thing. And I know that doesn't sound Thanksgiving-ish, but that's me. Some of you pumpkin pie eaters or apple pie, mm -hmm. like, we want to hear from you. What's what's going on your dessert plates? Apple crisp. And by the way, there's always room for? Dessert. Always room for always. dessert. Yeah. Yes. Listen, I'll have any dessert as long as they're serving coffee. Oh, coffee is good. It's a must. It's a plus, and mm -hmm. it's needed. All right, especially with your family. There's a lot of kids like we have like, running around. Coffee, coffee, like, coffee, coffee, we need some coffee. coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> yeah, we got really Somebody had too much coffee. coffee. <laughs> yeah, someone doesn't need any coffee. They just have uh, <laughs> just a coffee, natural coffee. energy source. Yeah. Like 100,000 coffees. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need 100,000 <laughs> coffees. Uh, you don't even need one. Yeah. So we want to know, drop in the comments to hear. Okay. So first of all, your team uh, main dish, team side dish, and then on team desserts, we're all on that team together. All, all right. On what's, the, what's the first thing that's going on your dessert plate? And how many of you like, I'm doing multiple things. Like I have a uh, pecan pie, but I'm throwing some apple pie and some peach cobbler mm -hmm. and some chocolate mm -hmm. pie and whatever else is available. I'll take it all. Like right? how many of that? My, yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys on that one. By the way, uh, small groups are happening this week. Love to see you back there. Back on this week. Yep, yep, back on. And hey, we got um, some things happening. We are starting our Christmas series next week. Wow. Uh, oh, I can't believe it. Called King, K-I-N-G, and talking cool. about the Go Frankenstein and Murder that's brought to Jesus and describing each one. It's going to be, wow. this is going to be a fun series. And then Christmas Eve, we're together in person at 181 Town Park Road. And so start inviting friends, family out cool. now. And we'll love to see you. If we haven't seen you in a while, we'll love to see you. Oh, it'll be great. Invite someone with you and hey, celebrate with us. And hey, hashtag 
Thanks living, all right? Thanks, be thankful living. each and every day, each and every day. Something to be grateful for. Thankful for. All right, let's go. All right, drop in the comments. We want to hear from you guys. All right, gobble gobble. gobble, gobble! This is Pam, and we want to welcome you here online at Restoration Church. We exist to lead people to become fully engaged followers of Jesus. And if you're joining us for the first time, we're honored that you're here with us. We would love to connect with you at rechurch.tv connect. We also want to thank you for your continued generosity here at Restoration, where we live to give. The easiest way you can give is by going to rechurch.tv give or text GIVE to 845-209-1313. To get more information on how you can take your next steps here at Restoration, simply visit us at rechurch.tv. Thanks again for tuning in. We hope that this message today will give you the peace and encouragement you need. When we step back and take a look at this world, we see beauty. We see tall mountains that reach the highest altitudes. We see great bodies of water that cover most of Earth's unsearched surface. We see deep valleys that divide one mountain from another. We see man-made inventions that are results of hard work and creativity. Above all, we see people. The most beautiful of all creation people. Yet with all this beauty in the world, we still see great sadness, vast hatred, constant war, abundant evil, unexplainable pain, poverty, division, terrorism, and oppression. What is there to be thankful for? We can be thankful for our health, family, friendships, freedom, home, education, clean water, food, and employment. But what about those that don't have these things? What can they be thankful for? And what if all these things we have today were taken away from us? What then would we be thankful for? Is our thankfulness based on what we have here on earth? Or is it based on something much greater than ourselves? Something eternal. Something that you don't lose when you die, but you gain. Something that cannot be taken from you because it goes on forever. Your life. That God crafted out of the love and goodness of his heart and wrapped it in a perfect and eternal purpose. That can't be compared to the pain experienced in our earthly bodies nor matched to the beauty we see in this world. We can be thankful for the breath of life that makes us the living beings we are. That we don't just walk the surface of this planet aimlessly, with nothing to look forward to. But we exist to forever experience over and over again the grace, love, and joy of our Creator, Jesus Christ. Let's be thankful for everything we have here on Earth, but above all, be thankful for our salvation and for what is yet to come.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Seth here. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Restoration Church. We are honored to be with you today, and we have the standalone message simply called Be Thankful. And yes, right in this thankful season, a bunch of you celebrate Thanksgiving this past Thursday. I'd love to hear from you. Drop it in the comments right now. What was your favorite dish or side dish um, at your Thanksgiving meal? Drop in something that you're thankful for. Uh, maybe give a shout out to your spouse or to your kids. Hey, we can give a shout out to Jesus. Jesus today, we're thankful for him and what he's done for us. And today, I just want to talk about thanks living. That's right, thanks living. This idea of not being just thankful one day out of the year, but to live a life of gratitude. And it's kind of like an attitude of gratitude. And the Bible actually speaks a lot about this. And so we're going to take a few moments today to really focus on, on, on being thankful. And I like to say we're grateful, thankful, and blessed, right? You know, just being grateful for what God's given for us, thankful, sitting back the praises to Him, and just living the blessed life that He has for each one of us today. In fact, we find this in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. Paul speaking here, and this is the idea of us always thanking God. In verse, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. So this idea of just always thanking God, when we're praying, when we're praying for others, when we're praying over situations, Philippians chapter 4 says, you know, if everything with prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So in our prayer life, it's really this attitude of gratitude. It's really to start everything off with a heart of gratitude, being thankful for what we have or, or, or where we're at. And it could be the best situation, you're on the mountaintop of life, or you could be in the valley and you're just struggling to get through today, um, we still come with a heart of, of gratitude before God, being thankful, hashtag be thankful. And so I'm going to challenge you to be thankful today. And in fact, I'm going to give you four reasons, four reasons why we should be thanking God today. Uh, first is simply this, is God wants it. God wants us to, you know, to be thankful, uh, and He wants us to show appreciation. We find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, and for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks in all circumstances. That's, that's God's will for us. He wants it. He, 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 he desires us to be thankful in all situations. The Lord wants us to be thankful for His providence and, and His sovereignty. Jesus wants us to be thankful for taking our sin and making us clean. The Spirit wants to be thankful for His guidance and comfort. God has emotions and He desires praise. And so this idea of glorifying God, we do so through gratitude, you know, in all circumstances. So good and bad, right? Like we said, mountaintops or valleys, um, you know, the best days or the worst of days, uh, we're coming in with a heart of gratitude. And by the way, it changes the way we think and our perspective on things. It changes how we act towards others. It changes and an, an our response to God when we come with a heart of gratitude, when we seek Him and, and, and just be thankful for what He's done for us. In fact, I would challenge you, if you haven't ever done this or you haven't done this in a long time, to sit down today after this message and, and just start writing out at least, I'll give, you, I'll give you a list, at least 10 things that you're thankful for, okay? Um, I think you can do more than that. In fact, a few years ago when I was working at a private Christian school, uh, one of our English teachers had challenged their class to, to write down a list of 100 things that they're thankful for. Not 10, but 100 things that they're thankful for. And, and, and the teacher brought the assignment to me and just, you know, said, hey, you know, could I be a resource if some students are trying to figure this out? And sure enough, a lot of students were struggling. The, the first few items were pretty easy. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful to have something to eat, a place to live, you know, clothes to wear. Like they started, but then it, it got stuck. And a lot of people were stuck on getting and, and getting past even making it out of you know out, out of the single digits. They were struggling getting number ten and number eleven on a thankful list. But what happened is when the students really started thinking about things that they're thankful for, um, and, and they started jotting things down and being more aware of what's happening and, and what's been given to them, and, and and all the things that we often take for granted. Here in the United States, we take a lot of things for granted. You know, our freedoms, we take for granted. Uh, having fresh running water, we take for granted. Having clothes to wear, we take for granted. Having, you know, places and stores to shop, we take for granted. Cars to drive, you know, roofs over our head. Those are things we just kind of like, 
we, we almost feel like we're entitled to, but we're not entitled to anything. And the only thing that we're entitled to is death. That's what the Bible says. For all sin, for all shall glory to God, and our penalty of sin is death, right? But God's given us the, the opportunity for eternal life, and, and He's given us freedoms and, and things that we can enjoy. And so there's a lot of things to be thankful for. So those kids got that, the students started writing it down, and sure enough, the students were able to reach a hundred things that they're thankful for, and some jotted down even more because they couldn't stop once they got going. I encourage you, hey, start with 10, and just go from there, and be grateful on a daily basis, all right? God wants it, He, he is, and he's worthy, by the way, he's worthy and he deserves it. He's worthy and deserves our praise. Say, God is worthy. So let's be grateful. God, thank you for making me in your image. God, thank you for, for the family you've given me. God, thank you for, 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 for my job. Thank you for, uh, thank you for my struggles, Lord, so I can learn to depend on you more. Thank you for the pain I'm going through so I can rely on you for healing and for strength, right? All right. He's worthy and he deserves it. Another reason why we should be thanking God today is this. Everything is from God. Everything is from God. Okay, everything that's been given to us is from God Himself. First Corinthians chapter one, verse four and five. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace God has given you in Christ Jesus. That in every way you were enriched in Him in all speech and all knowledge. All right, so every everything is from God. And so he's giving us, you know, this grace. He's giving us his, uh, you know, God's given his son, Jesus. And, and he's given us enriches and, and the knowledge. He's given us his word, the scriptures. How many of you woke up this morning and said, I'm grateful for your, your word. I'm grateful for the Bible. All right. Drop that down on your list. I would recommend it, you know. And if you haven't read and opened your Bible today, I encourage you to do so. Okay. Open up. Spend time with God. Because the more you spend time with God, the, the more you are, have more reasons to be thankful for who God is because you learn more about him and what he's done for us and, 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 and the plans, the purpose he has for us. So again, it's changing our perspective. All right. So, so, so don't take these things for granted. Again, uh, we have the freedoms right now of religion in, in the, here in the United States. We have the freedom to open our Bibles. We have the freedom to have the Bible in our hands. Not everyone in this world has it. There's many Christians, millions of Christians, obviously around this world today that are dying for their belief in Jesus, that are, are being put in prison for having a position Possessing the scriptures, having a Bible, and um, so okay, be thankful that we have it, and then let, and, and 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 be thankful for those around us, and be praying for them. Right? Be thankful. Mindset: Everything is from God. There, there's not a thing, single thing we own, nor a single thing about who we are that has not been given to us. Not a single thing we own, or not a single thing about who we are that has not been given to us. From the tiniest detail of our parents to the house that we live in, from each and every breath to our salvation. Listen, even in our greatest offerings and sacrifices, listen, we can't outgive God. Even in our greatest offerings, we can't outgive God because of what He's given to us. Here at Restoration Church, we often say we, we live to give. And we have such a generous church. I thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness there. And, and yet, no matter how much you give, you can't outgive God because God is, 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 has started it. He, he, he gave us first. He gave us life. He gave us His Son. He gave us the idea of redemption. He gave us the ability to, to spend eternity with Him in heaven. He's given us everything we possibly need need. In fact, he takes care of our needs here on earth. The Bible promises that. All right, so everything's from God. So four reasons to thank God today. First, simply, God wants it and desires it, and he's worthy of it. Second, everything is from God, and and, and, and we can't outgive God. Uh, that's how good he is. And then third, a lack of thanksgiving keeps us from moving forward. A lack of thanksgiving keeps us from moving forward. It actually it, it hinders our walk with God when we, when we have a mindset, when we're, we're stuck in complaining, we're stuck in, 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 in this mindset of, of not having enough, not being content with what we have. We found this with the Israelites, and we're going to read this in the book of Exodus, and they were, you know, God had promised them and given them the promised land, and a, a lot of the stuff, every single way, God has provided for them, you know, hungry, provided manna, thirsty, struck a, walk out, a rock, out came water, like he just took care of their needs. They weren't satisfied. And for Exodus chapter 16, verse 12, it says, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I'm the Lord your God. All right, so he says, listen, I'm going to provide for you. 
You know, but even as God provided it, they continued to, to mumble and to, to grumble and to complain. And, and, and so after God led his people out of Egypt toward the promised land, they spent their time in the desert complaining, complaining, complaining. And if you're not careful, you get stuck in, in, in this, this mold of complaining. There's complaining all around. People just complain, you know. And, and, and so we have to learn to, to be thankful and be, to be grateful. You know, it's in our nature to complain. And I, I want more. And this is not enough, you know. And give me that. And I deserve this. And, you know, and I, 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 I want the latest, greatest, that. Whatever. We complain. We're not satisfied. We're not content. And, and so we need to come of a heart of gratitude. There was this man who uh, wanted to become a monk. And so he went to the monastery and he was talking to uh, the abbot that was there and, and said, hey, I want to become a monk, you know, and, you know, and I, I so I, I'm something I've been desiring to join for, for a long time now. And the abbot said, okay, well, he, Here's here's the rules. Simply as this is, um, you can't say anything. Um, you know, if we have to, we take a vow of silence here in this monastery. And so, once a year, you're allowed to speak two words. And the dude kind of thought it was that was a little tough, you know, a little strict. But he's like, hey, something to des- desire to be. So, sure enough, a year passed, and he had his chance to go before the abbot and say his two words. And the first chance he get the two words he spoke, he said, bad food. And so then, you know, he goes back to his room and, and another year passed and he goes before the abbot again. And this time his two words he spoke and says, hard bed. And then he, another year passed, you know, and he comes back before the abbot and he complains or he says, I quit. <laughs> and the abbot just said, hey, I knew it. I knew it because from the moment you got here, all you did was complain. Right. See, it's just it's in our nature. You know, you get the only you, one. If you only had two words to speak, would, would it be words of complaining? You know, you know, what would you use? Right. We, we're just so stuck in this complaining mode. We need to learn to be thankful. The Israelites were stuck in this complaint mode and they 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 struggled and, and, and they, they complained every bit of the way. And so as a result, their eyes were taken off the big picture and they spent much more time in the desert than they should have. All right, you know, 40 years in the wilderness. If you look at a map, you know, where, where God led them from to where he led them to, it would have not taken anywhere near 40 years. All right, it could have actually probably taken a matter of months. But because of their complaining and, 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 and stuck on them, their eyes weren't focused on what God had for them. If you're not careful, a lack of thanksgiving can keep you from moving forward. You're going to be missing out on the promises and the blessing that God has for you today. He's just so stuck on me, on you, on your yourself. All right, and you can't get past yourself to see what God has for you. The promised land was waiting for them. The promised land is waiting for you. But because of their lack of thankfulness, it kept them from taking the next step into it. What are you doing? What's the lack of thanksgiving in your life, the thankfulness you have? What's that holding you back from? See, entitlement holds us back, but gratitude propels us forward into the life that God has designed for us. Okay? Entitlement holds us back, but gratitude propels us forward into the life that God has designed for us. So, so let's get into this attitude of gratitude. Because entitlement, hey, I want what's mine, it's going to hold us back. You know, stuck in complaint mode, it's going to hold us back. But if we come with an idea of gratitude, it's going to propel us into what God's designed for us. So four reasons to thank God today. Simply, God wants it. He deserves it. He, he's worthy of it. All right? Everything's from God. All right, um, and, and, and so so we can't outgive God. A lack of thanksgiving keeps us from moving forward. All right, entitlement is going to hold us back. And fourth is giving thanks changes our perspective. Giving thanks changes our perspective. When we are thankful in our prayers, our focus turns away from ourselves and to the goodness of God and, he, and all that he's done for us. Our hearts are stirred with joy. Our joy begins to overflow, okay? It's, it, it, our joy begins to overflow, and, and the result is fruit, growing to be more like Jesus. Okay, fruit sprouting all over the place, okay? And it's contagious. Uh, when you have an attitude of gratitude, when you're being, and going to God with thanksgiving, it's contagious. 
and, and, and it changes our perspective on things. You know, something that you thought was, you know, the most important thing in your life, when, when you come with God of gratitude, that, that often changes. What you thought was best for you, when you find out that it's nothing compared to what God has that's best for you, right? It changes our perspective. Because we can only see here, you know, what's, what's in front of us. God sees the big picture. He sees what's before us, what's behind us, what's coming, where we were, you know, you know, he's, he's got the full, you know, it's like, you know, he, he's got the full realm, the full scope of it all. So let's tap into God's perspective in our lives, you know, and, and look outside ourselves. Again, this is what Thanksgiving does. It looks beyond ourselves. It looks beyond our needs. It gets us more aware of the needs around us. All right, let's have those perspective on, you know. So it's so often like we're walking around blinders, you know, and, and, and you can only see what's ahead, you know, only see what's right in front of you. And God says, no, there's so much more to see. And throughout the scriptures, open the eyes of my heart. Open his eyes, Lord, you know, as Elisha's praying over his servant. God, open his eyes that he may see. You know, I, my prayer for you today is that your eyes are open, that you can see the goodness of God. It's hard when you're in, stuck in a circumstance, and when you're stuck in that, you know, what you can see is what you're dealing with in that moment. But if you come to God and, and, and seek forgiveness uh, or seek th thankfulness, it might come with some forgiveness in there to repent of not being thankful, not showing an ad attitude of gratitude. Then come in there and seek to see God in a lens of being grateful and thankful and blessed. Then your eyes are going to be open and you're going to be more aware and your perspective is going to change. And then you're going to grow in the goodness of, uh, of God. You're going to, your, your fruit's going to develop and you're, you're going to be able to be more like Jesus. And you're going to be sprouting fruit all over the place. And you know, and, and it's contagious and people are going to be attracted to you through, through your gratitude to others. Your perspective changes and it changes you and it changes the people around you. So families, mom and dads, lead your family with with, with, with an attitude of gratitude. And marriages should be, should be focused on gratitude. Uh, Husbands and wives, I'm going to challenge you right now. When's the last time that you show true appreciation for your spouse? All right, don't don't be you know nudging each other right now. And say I don't know when the last time you told me no. But when's the last time that you show gratitude? And here, I'll give you two 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 ways to do this. Right, do it now and two make it a habit. Right, when's the last time you were thankful to God? Do it now and make it a habit. When's the last time you show appreciation to your kids? Do it now, make it a habit. Kids, when's the last time you show appreciation to your mom and dad? Do it now and make it a habit. Okay, just get in this 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 attitude of gratitude. Send a text to someone, hey, I appreciate that message. I appreciate what you, you did for me. I appreciate you working extra hard this week. I appreciate what you know, you just being my friend and always always being there for me. I uh, maybe invite someone over and show them appreciation that way. Give them a phone call. I don't know what it is, what you need to do, but there's someone in your life right now you need to show appreciation. Into. First and foremost, let's go to God and be grateful for what He has done for us. See, the art of thanksgiving is consistent, steadfast, genuine, year-round thankfulness in all things, for He is good. God is good all the time. And all the time, that's right, God is good. And so the art of thanksgiving is consistent, steadfast, genuine, okay, authentic, year-round thankfulness in all things, okay, for God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Real gratitude isn't just an emotion. It's genuine, and it will affect your behavior. Okay, real gratitude is it's genuine. It's going to affect who you are. It's going to affect your response to things. It's going to affect your demeanor. You know, when we're, when we're, when we're thankful and grateful for things, you know, when... There's a smile on our face. There's joy and peace in our life. And, and, and God says, I have joy and peace for you. I truly believe why he says, okay, I provide you joy and peace. And then at the same time, he says, and with everything, with prayer and thanksgiving, he's understanding. If we go with thanksgiving, with gratitude and, and thankfulness, and, and, for, and for the way God's blessed us, then that's when the joy and peace is there in our life because we're content with, with what God's done for us and what he's doing for us and the, even the situation and circumstances that we're in today. All right, so real gratitude is not just an emotion, it's genuine and it affects our behavior. So you listen, it's not just Thanksgiving, it's thanks living. It's not a one day a year event, come on. This let's live every single day with a life of thankfulness, okay? A life of gratitude, a, li a, life, a life that's seeking to, to just praise God for who he is and what he's done for us. So four ways we could, or reasons why we need to be thankful to God today. God wants it, he deserves it, he's worthy of it. Everything's from God. All right. Now, a single thing has been, you know, uh, that, that we have has not been given to us. Uh, we can't outgive God. A lack of thanksgiving keeps us from moving forward. All right. The entitlement's going to hold us back. Our gratitude propels us forward. Let's move forward today. And giving 
things changes our perspective. Okay, it's our Thanksgiving that is consistent, it's authentic, it's happening 24 seven. So let's bring uh, an attitude of gratitude today uh, and let's live a life of thankfulness. And thanks for living, okay? And it's gonna change you and those around you, I guarantee it. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for um, just who you are. Thank you for sending your son Jesus for us. Thank you for providing for us in our needs. Thank you for uh, loving us beyond that we can understand and unconditionally. Thank you for our church, our church family. Thank you for our community. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for um, allowing me to be able to lead. Thank you for allowing me to just be your servant and just thankful for calling and using someone like me and thank you for all those who are watching today thank you that their lives can be changed forever by simply crying out and calling to you lord because you've offered us your free gift of salvation and we thank you for that thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you for your love thank you for your peace thank you for your joy thank you for the hope that only you can provide we love you in your name amen Hey guys, thank you again so much for joining us today and let's live a life of thankfulness, an attitude of gratitude, all right? And um, hey, if there's anything we can be doing for you, please reach out to us at rechurch.tv slash online. Uh, thank you for your continued generosity. Thank you for just being the church. And if you're ready for your next step here at Restoration um, or you are ready you know, to receive Jesus' personal Savior, you wanna know more or whatever it may be, rechurch.tv slash online. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us today. If you are new with us and said yes to Jesus today, connect with us at rechurch.tv slash online. Let us know how we can pray for you at rechurch.tv slash prayer. And thank you for your continued generosity. We give out of the overflow of our heart. Giving is an act of worship that expresses our gratitude, faith, and love for others. You can give by texting GIVE to 845-209-1313 or online at rechurch.tv slash give. To keep us updated on what's happening here at Restoration, text RECHURCH to 84576 or visit us at rechurch.tv.